So we begin uh, together with a simple song that hope everyone know. And uh, the song uh, of uh, the Abba Father. This is what we, if we want to stand for this song, we The, 
know the roses was alive. I can see that the roses was alive. And Father, if you explain me that these roses represent each person on earth. So you have uh, already, you are in the garden of the Lord, you know? And when we die, we go. This roses is no more there to represent you. You will be there if you are faithful to the Lord. So we continue and uh, what was striking a little bit me, I saw a little animal there. I saw a dog passing. I said, how oh, come the dog is here? <laughs> <laughs> but he explained to me that uh, when Jesus died, he died not only for our salvation, but he renewed everything. Everything will be renewed by the redemption of Jesus. And a day we will have a new heaven, a new earth, and it will be all renewed with the gift of the redemption of Christ. So this is what it represents. This micro is so strong because they have a lot of echo. Huh? Yes, it's strong. It's strong, yeah? It can be a little bit lower. Uh, <laughs> yeah, lower because a lot of echo come back. <laughs> So, when we are looking together, and uh, I saw this room coming, and so that day we made different, you know, and I see like a, a, a holy of the holy. So it means that this place is reserved for the Holy Trinity. Okay. It's really strong, you know. It's vibrating. It's vibrating. Yeah. I will talk from a distance. Yeah. So it's made that the place uh, was reserved to the Holy Trinity. When we enter there, in front of me appeared a big manger. A manger, and in the manger appeared the Holy Family. Jesus, the Virgin Mary, and Saint Joseph. You know, the Virgin Mary is so beautiful. The, the skin of the Virgin Mary is so pure. We have nothing compared to that on earth. I assure you. And she is real. It means she, this is her body who was there also. Because of the assumption of the Virgin Mary. Huh? And we have Saint Joseph who is really, really beautiful and a strong man. So Saint Joseph is really a strong man. He was around, uh, I would say, appearing to me around 40, no more than that. And uh, he was really strong. And the capacity he had, you know, it's from him. Everything come from, from him was so strong that I understand now when we are praying and saying that he is the terror of the devil. And uh, he talked to me and uh, he said different things to me, but he talked about the purity. You know, the purity of Saint Joseph, I think it's really needed now, particularly for the families. And I talk to the men now. You know, the fathers on earth has a responsibility of purity in their family. You must be guardian of the purity of the family. It means that everything who can attack the purity of the innocence of your little children, this is not from God. And you are responsible about that. Partially today. You know that uh, in our area, they are teaching how to make love to the young, to, uh, starting at the kindergarten now, in our school. 
and this, they are completely disturbed by that. So the parents had the authority to go to the school and said, I doesn't want my children, when you are saying this, listen to that. This is important, you know. If everything, you let everything going on, your, the hurt of your son or the family will be there. And also, the fatherhood of St. Joseph. You know, the fatherhood of St. Joseph was a care for the, the Virgin Mary and for the baby Jesus. And this fatherhood was so strong. You know why? Because St. Joseph represents the fatherhood of the eternal father on earth. He was the face of the eternal father for the baby Jesus. And he told me that he died before Jesus. I never said that before, I think. He told me a lot of things, but this thing he said that he died before Jesus, you know, was going for his public ministry because he has to be, you know, no more on earth because Jesus will reveal the eternal Father. And by humility and by his humble heart, it was preferable for him not to be on earth, that nobody will interpret wrongly, you know, his fatherhood for Jesus. This is really brilliant, huh? And um, after that, the Virgin Mary speak also to me, and what was shocking me a little bit, you know, shocking in the good sense, it's because she asked me to take the baby Jesus in my heart. And uh, when she asked me, you know, I feel so ashamed, I would say, uh, not to, you know, the dignity was not enough. <laughs> and I said to her, how can have the baby in my, you know, and she replied immediately, and I understand now that I have no choice. <laughs> she replied, did you not take the body of my son in every Eucharist that you celebrate? Mm -hmm. So I understand that, uh, you know, sometimes you just do what they want you to do. Uh, and she gave me the baby Jesus. When I took him, I was so much happy. My heart was so beating strongly. The joy in me was so great that I, I have been out of the experience. But when I returned, you know, for to, to, to lay down, I was immediately brought back with the baby Jesus in my heart. So, when I, I'm saying that, we need now to put the Holy Family in our family home. You know, the scene of the Holy Family. It means Jesus, the baby Jesus, huh? the Mother of God, the Virgin Mary, and also Saint Joseph, who represent the, the Holy Family and it means that a family, a Christian family, has a model of life. And we will found our model of life in them. After that, you know, it's a long experience, but he showed me many things. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, Saint Padre uh, Pio bring me to the Purgatory. When I entered there, it was a big, large space. And I saw the people with a little table in front of them. They had a, a hood, you know, like that. And they were just looking down. So, he said, look, I saw many of them. And I said, who are they? And he answered, look again. So I look again, they have two more there with on, but the, I cannot see the face. It was, you know, uh, as a, a little cloud in front of them. 
that I cannot see through it. And he said to me, there are trees. And I can see some with cross on their chest, bishops. And I see some hope there. Since long time. He said, if they have nobody to pray for them, because when they die, the people say always, they are in heaven, they were priests. It's terrible, this thing. Right? <laughs> so they don't pray for them. And uh, when uh, he asked me to celebrate the Friday Mass for them, that they can be entering in heaven. I have also other experience of purgatory. One of the most uh, nearest experience of you was here. When I visit uh, New York the last time, I don't remember, I don't have the memory for that because it's all in English, you know, the names. <laughs> you know, I went to a place where it was like a memorial of the dead, of the person who died during the two towers fall. <laughs> but it was, you know, the two towers were on this side. And we, we went on the other side of the, the sea, there, like an island. And uh, they had a memorial there. It's a, a lady who bring us there, you know. So I was going with the others. And when I was entering there, I had this, this experience. I saw the soul who were dead, but the soul of this region, particular region, they came to me begging me for prayers and prayers, and it was so, so intense, you know, and immediately after, you know, the other came, the other from the, the, the two towers who died, came all together, I think they were all around 3,000, something like that, you know, and at that moment it was so deep, and I entered deeply in the purgatory. I discovered that we have seven levels in purgatory. When we go down, worse is the pain of purification for them before to go to heaven. At the last part, I can saw, see, sorry, I can see the the soul beaten by the devil. They were beaten by the devil as their purification. You know, you understand what I mean? They were, they were not in hell. This is different. This is at the last level. So at that moment, some soul goes high, quickly. I was astonished about that. You know, it's because of the celebration of the Mass for them. When the Mass are celebrated for the deliverance of the soul of purgatory, some need many, some need some few, and some with some grace. And I will tell you the grace is the merciful rosary. You know the rosary of, of the divine mercy. This is how we call that. You know I have to translate it. So the divine mercy rosary gave a special grace to bring rapid, quickly, I would say, quickly the soul to heaven. So when someone are dying, or when someone just passed away, pray the divine mercy rosary. In the hell, I never went, and I don't want to go. But I know that the devil, because of the exorcism, exorcism I made in my life. And the day I was making an exorcism, and I don't have too much time because I have to teach the course to the seminary. And, and I, you know, I accept this exorcism, but it was, you know, an exorcism, you begin with that, and you never know when you finish. It depends on the will of the Father. You know? Sometimes it can take. Two days, one day, sometimes can be three weeks, sometimes can be two years. This, this is a ministry, huh? 
when you, you begin this ministry, we never know when it ends. But you know, I was there and I, I went to pray uh, Jesus at the tabernacle and I said to Jesus, you must do something. I don't have more time. And I cannot come back if we, you know, we thought it was far. So I asked to send Michael to come. And when I entered the room, I started the, you know, the, <laughs> the exorcism prayer again. And St. Michael appeared. I saw St. Michael three times in my life. And he appeared. St. Michael was, I will say, so tall, like 15 feet in front. So I saw him there, and I saw him with his sword. A flaming sword was so high, you know. And I asked him, I pleaded him, I said, Please send Michael to my patron. Help me to, for this case. And he just make a smile. <laughs> He's so nice. And he just do it, you know, with a sword. And I can see the flame of this sword coming down and touching. It was a man. Touching this man. And immediately, when the flame of St. Michael touched this person, the wind of the devil goes out. And it, you know, my experience showed that the devil goes always in the earth. And my assumption, now this is not from the teaching of the church, this is from my Michel, okay? I will say that the, I think that the hell is in the center of the earth. Because every time that I have it, he entered in the, in the earth. And at Fatima, the Virgin Mary opened the earth. And this is important that we realize that. So we will face the battle, like I said before. The time are urgent. It's almost an emergency time now. And when he gave me, you know, the fraternity, I have to build it quickly because you know, I know that I will be refuges for many priests who will come in our place. First of all, it will be a lot of trouble. This trouble will begin soon. They are already preparing the things now. They want to put in the United States, you will see revolution in your, on your street. You will see people fighting against each other for a political reason. You know? And you will see a lot of things, but it's all managed by the devil. And you will have also dangers between every nation will be a kind of, you know, advertising uh, rumor of war, I will say. But it will not be at that moment that the war will be. And when it will happen, the people, the money will crash also. And then you will have a big, uh, you know, a big standing of the population. And at that moment, the warning will come. I call that the Pentecost. I saw this. I saw the cross of Jesus in heaven. The King of Christ in heaven. And from the 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 clean, you know, the the wounds of Jesus, the ray fall on the earth. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit again. And this Holy Spirit will enlighten everyone on earth. You know, when John Paul, sorry, when John the 23rd prayed for the Vatican, he asked the Holy Spirit to come and renew the humanity. He was not only praying for the church, because the church had already received the Pentecost since the beginning. He asked for Pentecost for humanity. And this is what will happen. Jesus will give an answer to the this prayer of John the 23rd. It will be an enlightenment for every heart. Everyone will see themselves. 
They will see themselves as a mirror. In front of them, they will see themselves. They will see their state of soul. Not only see their state of soul, they will feel also their soul. And for the one who are dying on the you know, it's like a pre-judgment. For the one who will die, they, they will know where they are going. If they are going in hell, they will burn for their sin. They will see themselves, they will feel, it, feel them burning. They will feel also the beating of the devil. So somebody will not pass through, I assure you. And they will, the one who are going to the purgatory, they will see and they will feel it also the pain in purgatory. The pain in purgatory are different than the pain in hell. Okay? Pain in purgatory, it's a purification pain. It's completely different. They will see their purification, they will see their hope for heaven. They will taste it in their, their sins from every part of their body. And also, the ones who are really near of Jesus, their heart will be joyful, but at the same time, they will feel their imperfection that they have to work in again to be more united to Him. And this day, at that moment, everything will stop on earth. If you are in an airplane, it will stop, I assure you. And if you ask me, how come it will be? <laughs> God is God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe that your small airplane will bargain him? No way. So, everything will be fixed. You know, and you will have an, uh, uh, a spiritual experience come from of the illumination of your conscience to see how you are, in which state you are. So immediately after it will be really important. Because the people who are far away from the church want to come back. The priest, you know, it's preferable for the priest to have the state of grace before this morning. I assure you, you will not go for a pee. You know? <laughs> before the toilet please. You will not have time. The people will, it will be a lineup for the confession. So the priest will need help. And protector also. Because will, some will be really afraid that huh? they will become as the uh, under shock. Huh? And uh, you, you will have a lot of people who are not baptized who will ask you for baptism. So you will be there for, to help the priest to teach them the essential of the Catholic faith, that they can baptize these people. We will not baptize one by one for that. We will not have the time. We will baptize as the apostles did, you know, by sprinkling the water from the people in the same time and pronouncing, you know, the baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, these people, your people, your children, this is the time, you know, when we are praying now for the conversion, we must pray for this time. This is one of the most important times that we will have to choose Jesus. And this is really important what I say. You know, sometimes we are praying for them and we, we bug them, we, we are <laughs> exhausted them because we are saying, go, go, go to the church, go. When you are doing that, they become stubborn. They don't want. You have to be wise with the gift of wisdom. Pray for them, be witness of your love of Christ in front of them, and answer when they question you. No. No. This is a pit bull who do it. This is not God. So, you must be inside of this movement and pray for this enlightenment that you will have at that moment. 
because at, after this, a period around six weeks will be when the devil will have no power over the will of the person. It means that the person will have the fr full freedom to decide of her own conscience. If she won't choose Jesus, because everyone will see the Lord, no one can be after this enlightenment of conscience, warning, Pentecost, call it as you want, no one will be able to see God doesn't exist on earth. And everyone will see the sign of God in their life. And they will have six weeks, you know, to make their decision. After this decision, after the six weeks, the devil will come back with a kind of a hypnotic, you know, signature that he will use to to control the people. There will be the beginning of the big trouble times. Huh? Because the world war world government will spend and they will grab the people everywhere with some kind of military you know, police force that being already prepared for that. You know, they have already some okay. commando police um, who are prepared to do this work. I don't answer too much because, uh, you know, but you have to know that. And you will follow the path of the Psalm 91 because Jesus, Jesus gave me all the teaching of every sentence of this, this Psalm. I want to go fast because I don't want to take too much time. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. The Lord has prepared different refuge in the world now to welcome the people, welcome his people, as the day of Noah, as the day of Noah, Noah prepared an ark. To, for his family. He was the just in the middle of all these people who was just laughing at him. He has prepared a refuge who is like an ark to welcome you. You will go there by the will of the Father. Your holy angel, your guardian angel will guide you there. They will be you know, they will make a flame in front of you. You know, when they discover Saint Nicolas, when he discover the body of Saint Anne in Saint Anne d'Ori, in, in Bretagne, near France, it was because of his angel who lit a little flame in front of him and guided him, and he arrived, and the little flame goes there. So he did it. And he finds a cross. He tells one neighbor to come. They date together until the time they arrived. It was a church. And they, and they found the doors of the church. They opened the door. The church was still good. And when they, they went in, inside of the church, it was a little lamp with a flame. And there was the bowl of Saint Anna. Grandma Anna. And uh, you know, the relic of Saint Anna, Saint Anna de Beaupré in Quebec, it's a part of this bone come from the Saint Anne Dore in Bretagne. It's in Quebec. And the priest that I just uh, discovered was a, a redemptorist priest who take care of this sanctuary and he gave me the parcel of the bone from the sanctuary of the relic of Saint Anne. Amen. This is how they will do. They will lift this little flame in front of you and you will be guided to go to the refuge where you are by the will of the Father destined to go. This is what will be. 
and there will be the angel and nobody can enter in a refuge without the mark of the sign of the cross on their forehead. Many of you have already the sign of the cross and desire it because I cannot do it today. We have two numbers. Make the, de the desire of the sign of the cross and say yes to Jesus and you will be marked, you know, during the, the Holy Mass. Many of you. And uh, the angel will be there to protect the refuge. And then, when he will protect the refuge, nobody can enter in the refuge without the mark of the cross. In the refuge, you will be protected, you will have everything you need, the necessity. Don't think you will have your little stick. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need also a perfume from friends. <laughs> you are not there to cruise. No. You are there to please the will of the Father. And then will he provide for you the food, the water, the necessity that you need. But you will not stay on your stake. You will have to work also. And you will work for each other. And then you will realize what it means when we are reading, you know, the Act of the Apostle. When he said they were all in one heart, one prayer, and sharing together. This is what it means during the period of three years and a half. Father, before me, William, huh? talk about this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, after that, it will be the last part of this. And this is what Padre Pio saw. And I saw it also. So we call that the three days of darkness. Inside of the three days of the darkness, I assure you, it's uh, so black, it's more black than that. Uh, you know, it's, it's not only black, it's, uh, it's, it's a kind of a wall of God. He will come, you know, and he will pass on this earth, you know. And inside of this, it's full of demons who will try to put you out of the refuge. You will, you will see that but they will not enter the refuge. You will be protected under the, sh the shelter of the Lord. And they will swallow, literally, swallow everyone who have not chosen the Lord. And they will swallow, not everyone, everything that was marked by the beast or was marked by the sin of the world, the sin of the people. So after this, when you go out of this experience, I saw the earth completely renewed. The color, the brightness, the beauty, the flower was, and you know, where was some houses who were no more there because they were swallowed. I assure you, the concrete of the house the foundation was swallowed, of course. It's completely renewed. So all this time you will be protected by the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, with the love of the Virgin Mary. So we are all called to be ready, to be ready to help our brothers and sisters when this six, time, six week of time will be there to end them, to guide them to the church where they will find, you know, their peaceful heart, their happiness with the Lord. And uh, we are all called also to be disciples of Christ. And when Father William said, you must talk, you must stand, you must advise, yes. When we receive you know, when I, I have, uh, from the Lord, I have to make this vestment. But, you, you know, when the bishop gave me the vestment as a first abbot on our monastery, 
and after that I gave the vestment to the others. When he gave me the vestment and he put that, you know, on me, I heard the voice of the Virgin Mary saying, I call the apostle of the last time. This is a sentence in the message of Lazarus in France. So, we are just there, you know, to be faithful servants for the Lord and to prepare ourselves and also to be open. Consecrate, I will finish with that. I know that my time is short. Consecrate your home. You know you, how you consecrate your home. I will bless the exorcism soul. I will exorcise the soul and I will exorcise the water. After that, you will have to put the soul in the water yourself because I will not be able to put that in every bottle. You know? So you can do it yourself if you have both of them. But if we have just one, the water will be exorcised and the salt will be exorcised. <coughs> so this is what you do. You made a prayer to the Father, the Eternal Father. Eternal Father. No, no, you don't repeat. I give you the frame of the prayer. Eternal Father, I consecrate my home to you. By the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus, I give you my home as a refuge for the days to come. It will be your will for your people if you want the people to come here. I consecrate this home and with the holy water you sprinkle in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as a sign of the cross. And you go outside and you consecrate also your land in the same thing. You just say, you change the word house or home for land. I consecrate my land to you that you will dispose according to your will for the people you want to to come here. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the same time, you drop on the land the exorcism salt. Because the salt will mix with, melt with the land. Okay, somebody asked me, uh, you know, why are we doing our home as a refuge? and some refuge are already prepared. What kind of refuge it is? You know, I will tell you, if everyone who was asked by the Father has already made the refuge, it will be gorgeous. Because many refuse to do it. This is a problem. Now, when you are doing this, it will be for first your family. And if the Father wants to guide you after to a bigger refuge, they will guide you with the flame. The angel will guide you with the flame. But you can be sure that before this moment, you will have the protection of your house. It will be a refuge for you and for the family. It will depend on the Father if you refuge will be a permanent one, or a temporary one before to go to the bigger one. It will belong to him to decide. Okay. Thank you. So we will celebrate the mass and I have I don't know how much time I have. It's finished. Huh? So we will celebrate the mass and the uh, Father will be with me and uh, it will be nice to be with you for this celebration of the mass.